the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come to worship, praise your holy name. You said when two or three gather in your name, you've been in the midst of them. Father, we're going to invite you to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in all truth. Move us out of the way. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Give us that moment in time. We'll allow someone to be able to hear that word that you want that, that will change their lives as well as change our own lives. Continue to anoint us and guide us in all wisdom and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, I'm putting there and say, first of all, happy uh, Independence Day for the country. And uh, yeah. we val- look, look, hey, look, and we're validated for ourselves on the June the 14th. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, just in case somebody didn't know, we were, we were, it wasn't part, of, you know, we weren't part of that celebration. We are part of that celebration. And uh, I think every June the 19th, we would go ahead and say that. Amen. <laughs> You know, you know something that, that, that came on my heart. And I say mine and heart. You've been coming back and forth. You've been coming often. Do you like the highways that are built from like I-20 or I-10? Have you ever traveled through one of those highways? I mean, I think I have. I-75. You tell me you what the name of them? You talk about the name yeah. of them? <laughs> no, not the, the name of them, but just the facility of it, the, the, the convenience of it. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of times we talk really badly about this country because of the experiences that we've had in it. Oh, okay. Well, we definitely have a tendency to enjoy the amenities, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so at some point, some point you just have to roll the rope in the growth and say, let's just pray for it and do the best we can with it. I, I think that we disenfranchise ourselves sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I know other people try to, but what realities are, we were as much a part of the building of this nation as anybody else. Oh yeah, and we have we have been encouraged not to take owners for it, but we have some of them. It's home for me, right? I've never right. been an African in my life. Like oh, yeah. go some time to visit, right? But it's the only dirt I know. Georgia red clay. Hey, Amen. I know it. That's true. But yep. you know, you to, I think that to, you know, being in the military, how long were you in? Did you travel? Yeah, I did. I, I, well, I traveled mostly. Well, I traveled the United States. I never got, I never left Tonus. Okay. But uh, I, all over the country, I mean, I'm from Washington State to Florida, uh, from George Air Force Base out in California, all the way over to um, what, Savannah, not Savannah, but um, uh, uh, what's that one in, in Virginia? Oh, no. So I mean, we tour when we tour, we tour the whole country. Okay, hey, but yeah. this got to go around my eight forty five, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Uh, you don't mind? We just we can we can bring all that in with us as we keep going. Uh, but one of the things I did I put that business just just for a, a reminder, probably try to put it in every session, no matter what we go through. Uh, like, you know, what what is our greatest command? We got to remember, emphasize to the world that the message of the gospel, the commandments of Christ, is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength, amen? And to love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Uh, those are the, those are the uh, two, the first great commandment and the second, love thy neighbor to thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. So everybody wants to, uh, there's a, these are the commandments that Christ gave. Uh, these are the commandments that we said was the central theme of the Ten Commandments. Amen. And it, it deals with the relationship we have to a God and the relationship we have to one another. And, and if, we, if we follow this, I think we'll do, do well. The other piece is be not deceived. God is not mocked. There's a principle, right, Ella? Be, yeah. be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, vastly also reap. And then the other piece is all reminders of the country. Uh, Jesus never thought and said, every king that divides against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself cannot stand. So it's always important and that, you know, that applies in businesses, that applies in our country, that applies in our relationship, uh, that applies in ministry. I mean, almost everything, a house divided cannot stand. 
You got to be on that one accord in order to do that. Uh, so just remember that. That's something I think we should always remember. But I want to say happy Independence Day. And Christ gave us independence on the day that he died on that cross and rose again. Amen. I mean, that that is our, what you call it? Is that better to say our Independence Day? <laughs> the true independence day because it's who the sun set free is what free indeed. amen so so i want to say that fourth of july is is happy for everybody for this country has declared independence happy fourth what called june 19th where it included everybody because some people didn't celebrate freedom on the <laughs> on the 14th on the fourth of july but now everybody is doing that because that's what it's all about freedom uh, but the thing is that the, I guess I guess Elder Bishop, I guess we're gonna use Easter Sunday as the uh, uh, Independence Day. We might need to change it from from the word Easter to Independence Day. Easter? Yeah, change Easter to uh, Independence Day. Oh yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because because that that's the day we just celebrate the Passover and uh, our Passover to freedom. Now, so so I want to put that in there. Now, Elder, uh, we we was talking, Bishop and I was talking last week and wanted to wrap up with it on uh, Romans chapter 7. And what we're saying is, we're looking at what the, what, the first four, one through four, or one through six verses. So, so Bishop, here's, here's my, uh, here's my, my final take on, on, on those, those four verses. I want you to take a look at, look at this. Sin has no dominion over believers married to another to bring forth fruit unto God instead of death. Here's my, I got a couple of me I wanted to show you. I am delivered, and that's what I like about this Independence Day. I am delivered from the law being made alive in Christ, but dead to the law of sin and death. Yeah, yeah. Second one. Or third one. In Christ Jesus, we are dead to sin, but made alive to serve in the newness of spirit. And, I, and you know, I, I did jump ahead on that chapter because it was, I guess it's the last verse of that chapter said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So with that, in that chapter, Bishop, I was looking at it, and that, that last one I was saying, renewing your mind, and I think that's what we do when we fellowship every, you know, when people fellowship on Sunday, fellowship during the week, is the renewing of our mind, right? Renewing of your mind to serve God, and, and I think this is what you always kind of talk about, is dying to the flesh, serving the law of sin and death. So the point is that we 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 renewing our mind. Elder, you go. You you just want to put your camera off. You go, on, brother. You, you, you. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. We know in our minds. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, but you go. On. Hey, look, but Bishop, the whole point I'm saying is though is that we do have to renew our minds. And and I like what Joshua one and eight said: meditating on the word day and night. Elder, if we renew in our mind. It's, it's saying we are independent in freedom. We have freedom from the laws of sin and death. All right? The, the, these, these, the, the flesh wants us to renew toward the deed, you know, fulfilling the deeds of the flesh. But the, the spirit wants us to re, uh, focus on fulfilling the needs of God, bringing forth the fruits of, you know, fruits of good, fruits unto God. And set of fruits into death. So, Bishop, that's that's what I was looking at. Is that if you take those one through six, at least says sin, like the top one, sin has dominion, has no dominion over believers married to another to bring forth fruit for God instead of death. Okay. Yes, sir. One second. 
I should bring the whole thing up instead of doing the scripture. But here's, here's on the slide. I brought it on the slide. Here it is. I got it on the screen, though. You see? Okay, breath forward. Breath forward before he makes this thing uh, relevant to us. Uh-huh. It begins with the word, wherefore. Wherefore. Uh -huh. Wherefore says now, I'm going to take everything that I said thus far, and I'm going to show you how it is applicable and relevant to you as yes, a Christ. Right. So it says, Wherefore 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 Yes. Now, if you've been tracking this, and if you've been you've been really looking at what he's trying to what he's talking about, uh, in this particular instance, he was talking about the law of marriage as an illustration. As illustration, right? Now, so you have to ask yourself. Why does he choose Mary? Because, well, you, I, okay, you want to answer that, or you say that's the rhetorical question? Why did you choose Mary? Why does he choose Mary to show the efficacy of the law? You know, I, I, one of the things I've seen in marriage is the fact that there's a, it shows a, 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 a order, covenant, uh, a, a covenant, covenant, covenant agreement. Exactly, it's a covenant, and the fact is that. When we collect it, this is why I guess that's a real good point. This is why we now have the new covenant. Because the old covenant dealt with the law and for a specific group of people. Where the new covenant opens it up for mankind. And it's in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. So yes, we have sir. a better, we really have, in accordance with the scriptures, the covenant now is better than it was before. Yeah, and, and, the like, ahead. and the covenant that we have actually empowers us to keep whatever mm -hmm. the standards are. The love of God abides in us, and that love can, we, can, we can show forth to other people. And so God that, actually empowers us to keep the covenant that He, he, uh, he died for us to establish. Right, but here's the other point, too, I think he was saying is that now we're married to that covenant, right? Where mm -hmm. that marriage of the the, of the, the, the concept of marriage. Where he said is that if a woman marries another while her husband is alive, she's then, she, then, then she's an adulteress. So that that's what I'm thinking is when it, I'm using that that combination, showing that we're no longer married, or we died to died in the marriage that we had for death. Okay, now so you do you do agree then. Does a covenant or a marriage or any kind of relationship have to be between two living things? Two, two living things. Okay, amen. Well, you know, there are two dead things. So you can't be married to the law. I was going to say, either that or two dead things. And again? I said, either it can be a covenant between two things. Of a similar nature, uh, bo both are dead. And when, when we think in terms of that, the law in itself couldn't give life to it, for the most part, we're dead. Then it was spoken to a people who were cut off from God who couldn't keep the law. Okay, but they were dead. They were dead too. In scripture, that's never a marriage. A covenant is never between, between two people. Right. Always. But when he speaks in terms of being married, hmm, I'm glad to make clarification on that because. Uh, was he speaking in terms of being married to God? Well, who are you even married to? When, 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 even when the law was the issue, I thought the law was the first husband. Well, look at the text. The text says you're married to another. Who's another you're married to now? Uh, God, the Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay, that's a that's a that, that's a living being. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a that's a living person. Yes. You're a living person, and you're now married to, well, in this case, this is the living, resurrected, spiritual person. Yes. yes. And you can only be married to him by way of spirit. Mm. 
So this is the marital, this is the spiritual covenant now. Right. I think what the text is trying to show you is that before you were in a relationship with God on the law. Yes. But they were, I mean, yeah, the uh law of sin and death, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, in their relationship with God, God couldn't help you because the law stipulates what you must do and you agree to it. You say, in that agreement, you said they he brought them out to Mount Sinai. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Sure oh, that's what he wanted them to do. Yep. And they said, We'll do it. Yay, yeah, amen. We'll do it. We'll do it. They yeah. Said, yeah, David said that on Mount Sinai. Yes, he did. Yeah. They, 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 they said, Do you take this God to be your lawful way to help? And they said, Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> we will serve him and him alone, nobody else. And every time Israel goes off and worship a heathen God, he says, you're adulterous. Yes. Yes. So I just want to show you that the, the, the background in the whole thing here is that God is in a relationship with man first by law. Uh-huh. And you, that is binding. Yes. Until death. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Listen, notice, notice how the text will come. It says, well, for my brother, Ye also are become dead to the law. Yes. Your relationship with God is stipulated by the law. Uh-huh. <laughs> the only way to get out of that relationship is to die to the law. Is to die. Well, it, right. it, it, it turns out that's an easy thing because because you violated the relationship, the penalty is death. Yes. Yes. So it ain't like you just trying to get out of a relationship. The stipulations of the covenant demanded that you die. Mm. That is why the husband doesn't die. Amen. In the illustration, it talks about the husband dying. Uh huh. the application, you die. You die. Yes. That and, and in that death, no more dominion. Sin uh, or the law has no dominion over you. Now, the problem with the first covenant is, it's not God, it's not the law. It's you, it's us. The problem is you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> he goes on to tell you that the law is good. Yes. The law is spiritual. Yes. So ain't nothing wrong with the law. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. Right? The problem is, you got a, according to scripture now, I, I did not mean you, you married to a harlot. Yes. You married to a woman who was unfaithful. Yes. G, in the Old Testament, God accused them of whoredom. Yes. So I'm going to look up all those verses. And, and, the, and the only thing about that is that like you said too is that uh when we're married to another uh the oh, oh i'm talking about father the dominion this this flesh the sin is in our flesh but in our in our flesh dwell is no good thing uh, we're drawn away from life toward death constant in other words it seems like the old man that old relationship wants to keep drawing us back you can't blame the law for that. Yeah, you know, you know, it's it, it's what you want me to say. You can't get mad with the stop sign because you didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> that stop sign shouldn't have been there. No, <laughs> the stop sign is there for your good. Hey, man. Well, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and, and I guess that's what we get mad at, right? <laughs> because uh, we. We we like to we like to go woo we like to have that affair with with with, with the law. You see, the law is designed such that the law doesn't care about your motive. Just like just like a just like a uh, adultery relationship, right? <laughs> the law doesn't care about your reason. Uh huh. Well, look, 
listen, the law's not, I had an emergency law today. Ain't my, they ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't have anything to do with the fact that you in an emergency crisis situation. I told you to stop. I did, right. I'm programmed to tell you what you must do. I am not programmed to analyze and consider your motive, your situation, the, 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 the details of your circumstances. All I know is, is the man that comes to the stop sign without a crisis and the man that comes to the stop sign with a crisis are in the same boat. Both right. of them are going to stop. <laughs> Hey, but but I like the fact that, like I said, is the renewing of the mind piece is that we have dominion over the law and dominion over the the desire to go past the stop sign. So so I just want to kind of clarify you that we can't get mad with the law. Yeah, yeah. We can be we can't be implying that there's something wrong with the law. What the law simply did was expose the corruption, the lawlessness of fallen humanity. Yes. Yes. And there are no exceptions except Christ. Come on. Now, so now. We got all these denominations divided all up. Like, we ain't got no sense. Like, somebody got it better. All of us jacked up. <laughs> right. Right. Hey. Baptists, <laughs> Methodists, Lutherans, all of us jacked up. Right. All of us, none of us kept the Ten Commandments. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 and we've been free from the law. Right? Actually, what we better be glad is, is that the law doesn't punish you. Right. God right. God's the one that punishes you. He told Adam, you I don't think I'm going to get you over her. <laughs> I don't remember if Paul said we were free. Are we free from the law? We're free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have, so you did, we are literally free from that. But we're alive to, to life in Christ. Jesus, in Christ right? Jesus. But well, you have to. You have to die in Christ first. Right. But once you die. And then be raised with him. Right. Then, and only then are you free from the law. Right. Sin and that's, your, that's what we said before you came in. We're saying that the Independence Day, this this is the celebration of Christ dying and, and then raising from the dead is our Independence Day. We're hmm. independent. We are free from the, the laws of sin and death. But we mm -hmm. still, and I put in the scripture earlier, where the you know, scripture in Galatians said, be not deceived, God is not mocked, right? What some of a man saw, that should also reap. And and the key to it is, I think, to visualize is if, if the law is not wrong with the law, but the critical piece is we don't have, sin doesn't have, I think it said the sin doesn't have dominion, or, or it says the law, how the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. But not uh, but so you, have to, you have to think about it. Yeah. So, the scripture says that we are not under the law. And so you have to interpret that as this. You are not under God by way of law. Right. But you are still under. Mm-hmm. Now you're under God because under implied that someone has authority over you. Yes. Under implied that there's somebody over. Does that make sense? It, it. Perfect. You can't be under if there's nothing over you. So what's so that's why, that's why That's why Jesus, Jesus knew that the centurion understood some thing. He says, I am a man under authority. Yes. He understood that Jesus was under authority. He understood. I know, Jesus, that you're under authority. You, God, I somehow see your connection with God, and you're under his authority. So I know if you say something, God go back you up. Yes. Just like if I say something, Caesar going to back me up. Right. Right. Because I'm under Caesar's authority. Yes. So to be under something, 
means that you are subjected to uh, some higher personal authority. In this particular case, the one that we're married to now, we are under the Lordship of Christ. Yes. We're still under. Okay. But but what's the difference when we say dominion? The law we have the, the law has no dominion over us, right? Yeah. What does that mean? Not having no, dominion. Not. Not. I'm trying to get your focus off of the dominion of the law and to see that the the, the law is God's means to dominion over you. It's not that law hanging out that got dominion. God has dominion over you, and his, his dominion is stipulated by law. Okay. God's the one that's God is the one that that wrote those commandments. God is the one that came up with those constraints. God is the one that said you can't have another man's wife. God is the one that said you can't lie. You can't have fellowship with God if you're a liar. Now, that's an adulterous act, right? Mm. <laughs> Woo! Oh Lord, did you hear? He just, hey, Brother Addison, just, you can't, you can't have fellowship with God if you if if you you live a lifestyle of fornicating. Exactly. Now, now, but that's <laughs> an adulterous act. <laughs> but wait a minute, I'm with you. I think I am. I, but back to like verse nine. For I was alive without the law. Yeah. When, but when the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Yeah. And I'm thinking about that dominion. There's something about that is what we've been delivered from. Well, okay, but listen. So here's the question. Why do you need to be delivered from it? Because it it, it, it kills. Yeah, it was killed, right. The law of sin and death, right? The way no, because it destroys your relationship with God. You wish killers, right? That's the same thing being separated from God is death. It destroys your relationship with God. Yeah. Sin, any sin separates you from God. Legit. Any sin. That's why you need to be delivered. It's not so much that you need to be delivered from the law. You need to be in a right relationship with God. And you right. can't be in a right relationship with God as long as you sin it. Now that 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 brings it to the bad I think of the idea of legalism. Some, sometimes when we address issues that are that are seen, the idea of it is to remove something that separates from that person's life, to remove something that separates them from God. Um, to do it just for the sake of not not com committing the act, or that's not that's the void of love. I think you know some, we can get caught up on a behavior and say this behavior is not of God. But we should get caught up on the relationship that we have with God and we're trying to maintain it. Yeah. When yeah. we're addressing sin, we're trying to really get to help people ourselves to get back in right alignment with the Lord. He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then whatsoever you ask in my name, that's a powerful place. And sin will disrupt that. Now, does, it, does, does that, because the Bible said, he said, I'll never leave you, no forsake you. So when we say we're out of alignment, is it, it's not that he's out of alignment, it's just mm -hmm. us out of alignment, right? It's just us moving outside of the narrow path of life. Yeah, I know that the book, book says that that's narrow, but I think it's narrow in the sense, and I, I, don't, I don't debate that, but it's narrow in the sense that everybody but one way to do it, and that's the man Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, right. But what he opens up for us so far exceeds what we did, we were doing under the law and we sin, that it, it, there's no measure. I mean, we access so much more coming out of sin. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Entering into life and into abundant life presents us so many options and opportunities that we will never realize in a sinful environment. Right. We never did. Yeah. So, so a lot of times when we say that, it make, you know, sometimes I think, oh, we losing something. Man, I ain't lost nothing. I gained a heck of a lot stop running the streets nothing stupid <laughs> you know yeah, right. i came out on top when i left that environment but up, up to that point i was killing myself yeah 